Hey guys, welcome back to Honeycomb. My name is Keo and today we are going to be opening up this pair of sneakers. This is an Air Jordan 1, but this is the Air Jordan 1 Zoom Air Comfort 2. So this sneaker dropped on the Nike app and the little fanfare, no one was talking about it. Um, but it just came out and I saw it pop up with a just in mark um, on the Nike app. And I thought, you know what, this is exactly the kind of sneaker that you guys love to see on YouTube. Um, not that it's a Jordan 1, because our Jordan 1 videos don't always do that well, but kind of these sneakers that no one really talks about, but are really great pairs of shoes that you can wear every day. Those are the ones that you guys seem to really enjoy uh, watching. So I thought, you know what, this is exactly the kind of pair that we should unbox for the channel. On top of that, it's a pair that I've really wanted for a while. So the backstory, Let's unbox the sneaker. Now the sneaker comes in this brown box, um, which is very similar. Actually, it's exactly the same as the original Zoom Comfort box from the previous generation. And uh, when you open up the box, you have some paper and the paper says Zoom Air all over the paper. And when you open it up, you have the sneaker. It's that simple. This is the Air Jordan 1 Zoom Air Comfort. All right, let's pull out the other the other two. Now, I have opened this box already, which is why this pair is unlaced. They actually come both laced, but I thought I'd go ahead and unlace this pair or, or this shoe so that I could show you guys what makes this sneaker so different. Uh, and you kind of need to be able to get in there with all the details. Now, before I close up the box, I do want to show you the underside of the box. All right, so this is kind of the breakdown, this beautiful illustration explaining what they did to the sneaker to make it more comfortable. Now, the original pair also has some graphics like this, and I happen to have that right here. Now, here's the original packaging. So they basically show in this paper what they did to make it more comfortable. And there were a couple things. They definitely have the same uh, special foam and zoom air inside the sneaker. But I think they did pay attention to some extra stuff when making this new pair in how to make it even more comfortable. Now you also have this tag that comes on the sneaker that is another set of literature explaining other things that they did to the sneaker to make it more comfortable. So I'm going to go and read this one. AJ1 Zoom Comfort 2. Dynamic architecture, reimagined collar, tongue, and forefoot construction for ankle flexibility, midfoot containment, and forefoot expansion. So I guess it almost implies that it's on a different last, maybe? Lightweight, breathable materials engineered to offer proper support and breathability in a lightweight construction. It is light. Formula 23 foam. Softness balanced with en with energy return. Uh, my understanding is that Formula 23 foam is what Jordan brand is using to replace React implementation across the entire Air Jordan line. And then Zoom Air, Zoom Air in the heel for responsive low profile cushioning. All right, in terms of materials, you see right off the bat that this sneaker does not disappoint. Now the toe has some really nice hairy suede and you go all the way around that on the back, there is some matching gray suede here on the ankle to heel of the sneaker. But these are actually three different kinds of suede leather going on here. You have this hairy suede, which goes up the eye state. Then here on the heel, uh, it's a less hairy suede. And that's really good because this is kind of an area of the sneaker that rubs up against, you know, your heels apart that seems to drag on other things. So this one is a little bit more of a robust version of suede, and that'll also make it easier to clean. And then up here, it kind of transitions into new buff. So instead of having the, this two texture thing, it kind of does this three texture thing where it kind of wraps into that new buff. And this new buff is really, really nice. Jordan Wings logo is debossed into that little wing panel and it's colored red. One of the, my favorite things about this sneaker is that it's such a wearable colorway. It's kind of a cross between like a, a red and a shadow where it's got the red and black and white classic Air Jordan 1 colors or Air Jordan colors crossed with a classic black shadow colorway. 
Now the collar of the sneaker inside of the wing, which is detached, is made of a mesh, it's black mesh. And then the tongue is made of a neoprene. We'll get into that later. Uh, the side panel is a bit strange. Definitely looks like a synthetic material. It's got grains on it, almost like wood, but it's kind of like black on black. Matte and shiny. And then when you look here, kind of where the swoosh is, you can see where the material cuts and you can see that it is, uh, it is some sort of synthetic. It doesn't flex so nice. And that's interesting to note in a sneaker that's really designed to flex. Now, when you get to the midsole and outsole, you really start to see kind of the crazy ways that they made the sneaker more comfortable. First, you start with a standard Air Jordan 1 cup sole, which isn't a cup. It, it does, it is shaped like a cup sole, but they've cut out the bottom of the cup where you see the bottom of the sneaker. And here's the bottom. This entire red section is all made of their Formula 23, which again is like Jordan Brand's version of React. The previous sneaker was foam, but not this foam. And Jordan Brand's been very, very aggressive um, in pushing Formula 23. They put it in the Air Jordan 37. They put it in the Luka Doncic, uh, Don the Luka 1. And then rumor has it that they're also putting it in the new uh, Jason Tatum sneaker, which is the, I guess the Tatum 1. We don't know yet. Bleed green Celtics, baby. This is our year. This Formula 23 is designed to be soft and it, it, it will wear a little bit faster than your outsole of course this is rubber and this is foam and then you can see here like how they have the nike logo and it's not perfect because they're you know they're trying to reduce the number of really thin areas to wear away on the sneaker and then finally super interesting is that in there you can see the zoom air unit they put a window and i think this is so cool it says zoom air repeatedly over there and that zoom air unit takes up this entire heel section uh yeah my first pair of jordans ever was that what was it it was new york to paris uh colorway of, of the jordan one nike sb jordan one um and i thought that all jordan ones felt like that turns out that was a much more comfortable jordan one and so they've implemented not only that zoom unit but also this react style formula 23 foam in there and they did call it out with the color but i do like that when you have your foot down like this you can't see it no one can tell now let's put this sneaker aside and let's go to the one that's unlaced it only comes with one pair of laces by the way and the first thing that i want to call out is that this tongue is gusseted and what that means is that it's kind of sewn into place they have it here on the drawing where it says midfoot lockdown and it shows that it's been attached on either side. So it's like a booty construction. And that's kind of the thing that I want to uh, focus on when we're talking about the sneakers, that they've taken all of the different elements from other sneakers in the line that have made, made them very comfortable and brought them here. You know, the Air Jordan 7, which we unboxed with the trophy room, also has this neoprene. And when your foot goes in, it's super duper comfortable. Um, that's the first thing that they did new on this sneaker. So if you open it up, you can see that that goes all the way down to the strobo board. Re that reduces the shift of the tongue. You know, no more nylon. I do like nylon, but this is way more comfortable. It's a neoprene and it's really perforated so that there's more breathability. It's also light. Um, they've also put perforations on the inside of the sneaker, which I don't think existed on the previous. Yeah, they don't exist on the previous version of the Air Jordan 1 Comfort. Another thing that they've done is that they've actually, so it's very rare that you that these flaps come loose on an Air Jordan 1, and they do here, which allows you to see that they've opened up this little slit here. Now, usually that's what this little bump here is on the toe. Uh, it's supposed to be where your toe flexes, but they've moved it up here, hidden it behind the little flap, and that really allows your toe to bend when you're walking. Another feature which comes from another pair of Jordan sneakers that I really love, which is the Deer Series Jordans, which I wear so much. In fact, I am wearing them today. And this is a feature that they took from the airship. I actually didn't realize it when we were talking about it uh, when I first unboxed it, but sorry, they're really dirty. I've been wearing them. Um, but you're, if you guys remember, I said the back was from an Air Jordan 1, the front was from an airship and that's where they get the shape here in the toe the u-shaped thing but that's also where they get the um in this sneaker and in the airship it's a uh, garter 
that flexes. Here it's not really a garter, it's mostly just the gap and then the, uh, and then the neoprene, which is allowed to flex a bit. And then they put some reinforced stitching to kind of hold the whole thing together. They've also included this thing, and this is a really, really thick, beefy insole. It's not, it doesn't say it's Dream Cell or anything, but for comparison, I did bring the Dream Cell insole from the Air Jordan 1 Heritage that I got. And first you can see that this one is a lot more floppy and this one has a lot more body because it's thicker, but it's almost double the thickness of the standard Dream Cell insole. And that just contributes even more to the comfort level of this sneaker. Now, you can't see the zoom unit when you look in the top, but you can see the shape of the zoom unit. So it is top loaded. And while they aren't using a zoom uh, strobel over the entire sneaker, because it's top loaded and it's right below uh, the strobel, which is not like a board strobel, it's kind of like, a, it, it looks like it's made of fabric. So you really do feel all of that foam underfoot and it does flex under your foot. Uh, the previous one, one of the things that I didn't like was that the eye stay was cut in half. I have the sneaker here, Nika shoe, to kind of explain what that looked like. So they, what they wanted to do is have a free floating collar and ankle so you would get kind of like the feel of a low cut sneaker um, with just the look of a high cut sneaker. And the way that they did that was by not extending the eye stay all the way to the collar of the sneaker, which meant that your, your foot could bend forward, right? It could do this. So what they've done is that they've removed that to make it look more like a Jordan 1, and they've moved that flex point from there to down here in the toe. So it does make sense why they did that. It looks more like a Jordan 1. I think that's what more people wanted to begin with. And then the other thing that they've done is that um, I, and I think that this is good feedback. They maybe got this from customers because I've asked a few of the other guys here who have them, Mac our barista. But Mac said that one of the things that made it difficult for him to wear, even though the body was so comfortable, was that the ankle was uncomfortable uh, because of this extra layer that they put inside. So, you know, if you read on this little paper thing, they say that they added these elements in for comfort, which is this inside liner to the collar and the tongue with some perforations. But the result is that the whole thing's thicker and it's thicker on the inside. So it makes the whole thing tighter. And probably the reason why Nika wasn't so concerned about that is because she's tiny. Like her, her ankle's like this. Uh, but Max, a normal like five, six dude. And that brings me to like one of the wackiest things that I've seen on the sneaker. And that's when you peel back the wing, there's a hole. And just to show that it is a hole, you can put your finger right through there. And then they actually did the reverse. Instead of having padding that moves out towards your ankle, they actually put holes for your ankle. Again, breathability was a big factor here. Uh, one of the things that bothered me originally about the Air Jordan uh, 1 Comfort was that the swoosh is debossed. It's on the inside instead of it being an extra panel on the outside. But in the construction of this sneaker, you see that they're also using that section as an area for breathability. You can see that the back tab does kind of separate out in a way that regular Jordan 1s don't. Um, and that's done for comfort reasons, as you can see. So they still have that two layers, um, but you have those two layers in a regular Jordan 1. It's just that these ones are done to be comfortable. And ultimately that's the question is, are they comfortable? Uh, they are <laughs> like, uh, they are way more comfortable than our regular Jordan 1. I, I think without question of all the Jordan 1s that I put on, excluding, I mean, I haven't tried all the women's Jordan 1s, uh, but these are by and large, the most comfortable, far and away, the most comfortable Jordan 1s, more comfortable than the Zoom ones. It's not going to be like another React or Formula 23 sneaker. It's not going to have the balance of the Air Jordan uh, 37. It's just a different level of, of uh, comfort and maneuverability that you can get with a modern shoe built from the ground up. But in terms of style and the ability to be very comfortable and not have to compromise the style too much, 
this is such a good pickup, such a good option, and something that you won't feel scared to wear every day uh, because you don't have to be so precious about them. They're designed to be worn continuously. And for all of those reasons, as well as the fact that they look so gorgeous, were the reasons I picked them up instantly on the Nike app. Good news, it's not a hype sneaker. You're probably gonna be able to pick them up if you want them now. If you wanna wait till their discount, that's a good choice too. This colorway has fantastic materials. So if you wanna go ahead and pull the trigger on the first one that launched, the launch colorway for this model, you can't go wrong with this one. Now these sneakers do fit 100% true to size, and that's it for the Air Jordan 1 Zoom Air Comfort 2. Do you have any questions? I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Do you have feedback from the previous pair or from this pair? Maybe you have both because I have both on hand, but I can't wear both because that one is a size 5.5 women's. So maybe some of you have some feedback in that respect. So these are gonna go right on foot. I'm gonna wear these a lot uh, and really try to, you know, maybe put a few thousand 100,000 steps into them and let you guys know how it goes. With all that said, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate your viewership. If you wanna make a video like this one, you can make one in the same studio and it costs nothing extra. Just come co-work with us. It costs about 75 pesos an hour with your coffee. If you wanna know more about that, follow the studio Instagram. It's at Honeycomb Manila. You can DM for inquiries or reservations, or you can DM me personally. I'm at Keo Kosho on Instagram. You can see pictures of me wearing these sneakers, uh, hanging out with my family, eating some good food, drinking some great coffee. All right, I wish you guys good luck, good health, great pickups. Peace.